Uh, everyone, welcome to the August 6th, 2020 meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, meetings are being held remotely due to the governor's safer at home order. Um, so everyone can watch the meeting live stream. Um, so, um, and we'll have a little post on that here in a second. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call roll. Commission, excuse me, Commissioner Hardy's. I'm here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Commis me. Commissioner Gayu. Commissioner Lane. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Goon. Here. Commissioner Bagwell. Here. Councilmember Rodriguez. Here. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so our uh, next item on our agenda is the approval of the June 2020 uh, meeting minutes. We did not have a meeting in July. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nope. The motion carries unanimously to approve. Okay, so then uh, moving on, uh, we've got a report from the chair. Uh, which is basically my uh, time to note that anyone wishing to speak during the uh, public invited to be heard or the public hearing component of the meetings will need to be watching the live stream of the meeting for instructions about how to call in to provide public comment at the appropriate times. So instructions will be given during the meeting, such as what's on the screen now, and displayed uh, on the screen when it's time to call in to provide comments. Comments are limited to three minutes per person, and each speaker will be asked to state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding with comments. Uh, and then please remember to mute the live stream when you are called upon to speak. Uh, if you do have any technological troubles or need to leave the meeting, please call, contact uh, Maria, Jade, or Jane via emails or uh, the number 303-774-4308 uh, to regain access to the meeting. Okay, um, that's all I have, uh, nothing further on that. Uh, so our next item on the agenda will be uh, communications from our HBC liaison. Hi everyone, so great to virtually see you all. Um, I just have a few items from um, the time in between our last meeting in June. I, we did a few administrative COAs, um, 438 Collier wanted to remove the paint on the exterior to expose the original brick. So that's a really great project. Um, 824 4th Avenue uh, wanted to repaint their home. It was looking a little shabby, so they used a very similar color palette. 812 3rd Avenue replaced a little bit of um, siding on the front and they used the exact same siding. So those were the three approved um, COAs administratively. I wanted to report back um, after our June meeting, 917 4th Avenue, as most of you remember, um, was an application for tax credits um, and finding out that the garage was not part of the designation made that ineligible for the tax credits. And so I was in going to check on whether or not the repainting alone would qualify and it does not um, after checking with History Colorado. So I just wanted to report back on that. Um, the last thing, uh, obviously not this meeting because it's not on the agenda as we kind of have a, a packed meeting tonight. Um, I'd like to continue our conversation on tax credit review uh, after our um, very nice presentation from Erica 
with History Colorado last time. So I think perhaps in September we can continue the conversation on, on what that looks like for us as a CLG. So that's all I have for you. Okay, thanks. Any uh, questions for our staff? Seeing none. Um, so this is our uh, public invited to be heard component of the meeting. This would be for anything that is not on the agenda later on. So if there's um, anyone out there in the audience that would like to bring something to the HBC's attention, now would be the time. So we will take a five minute break um, and have uh, the instructions posted on the live stream. Uh, commissioners, if you could mute your mics and turn off your cameras during this time. Um, and we'll be back in a minute. Commissioner Carpenter, um, this is Susan. When we resume, we'll go ahead and check your mic. Thanks.
We'll give our live feed about 30 minutes to catch up and then we can begin chair. Looks like we have one caller in our waiting area. All right, that's been about five minutes. I can begin when you are all back. Chair, I'm ready to begin when you are. Okay, great. So it does sound like we do have um, a one speaker for our public invited to be heard. And so now we'll turn the, the floor over, um, the floor as it were. Uh, please again, as a reminder, uh, state your name and address before you begin. And you have, uh, there's three minutes. Okay, the first caller I'm going to unmute is ending in 089. Okay, I've unmuted Sharon, you. Like we have one. Hello, um, this is uh, Sarah Levison. Um, 634 Emory Street in Longmont. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. You may begin. Thank you. Um, I'm a resident of the historic East Side neighborhood, former council member and former liaison to Historic Preservation Commission. Um, the topic that I'd like to bring forward to the commission today is something not on your agenda. It is the matter of 830 Emory Street. 830 Emory Street has a sign in front of the yard that simply indicates a ADU is being added to the property. In truth, that's not the whole um, story. Um, the uh, property will in fact have a new ADU. However, it is not going to be the structure it was. Basically, um, the structure will be demolished um, except for two small pieces of wall. And effectively, it is a demolition of both the interior and the exterior of the property. And um, looking up the demolition paperwork, um, I see that there's quite a bit of a flaw that um, someone could simply not check the box, that it's 50 years or older, or as this property is um, within the original um, square mile of the town. And um, I would actually like the commission to be able to pick this up and uh, take a review of it. Um, the neighborhood has contacted um, the city in fact, um, as a courtesy, uh, planning department um, was going to be notifying the neighborhood association, the longest organized neighborhood in the city of um, new development applications and ADUs. And in fact, the city never received notice of this ADU application. Um, we uh, have been working very closely with the city for maybe 30 years or more on um, historic preservation and the um, uh, great um, look we have in the neighborhood. Um, I, as a final remark, um, I would like to remind everyone that next year is the 150th anniversary of the founding of the city of Longmont and Historic East Side was the very first neighborhood in that. And um, as a reminder, it would really be nice if we could see what the city was um, and have a large group of homes and structures that represent um, the original uh, town um, rather than have to just look at things in pictures because we don't have structures left. Um, the neighborhood um, really would like um, to discuss um, what demolition looks like in this town because effectively um, the structure will be demolished and um, the neighbors who got the notice within 300 feet were not even given um, any information except about that there was going to be an ADU. Um, they assumed that the rest of the house was going to be there. I think they may have called and one said that they were told there was going to be an addition. Uh, if you can review the paperwork, you'll see this is simply not an addition. It's basically taking the entire structure down except for two small portions of wall and then resurrecting a very large um, two-story home. Um, and then again, adding a new garage and then an ADU over the garage. So those are my comments. Um, the neighborhood would um, like to engage with the commission more frequently on issues. Um, it seems like there's been, uh, again, some lack of communication um, uh, between staff and, and the city. And I realize Karen Bryant, who we had a close working relationship 
is not with the city anymore, and we had a little bit of a lapse there. But um, I, I'd be happy to respond to any questions you may have. Okay, well, I certainly appreciate you calling in and bringing that to the commission's attention. Um, Ms. Kruger, do you, are you aware of any of this or, or are you able to comment or? Uh... Uh, yes, staff was made aware of the 830 Emory Street project um, because it is a contributing structure. We are currently reviewing the application now. So um, thank you to the historic Eastside neighborhood Association, we greatly appreciate um, your comments and your assistance with the Cultural Resource Survey, and we'll be reviewing that. So, thank you. Thank you. So, do you expect that that might be something on next month's agenda for the HPC? I I can't say. I I do know that because it's not a landmark and it is contributing, we will review it in terms of compatibility um, and in terms of the demolition permit. Um, but in terms of agen an agenda item, I'm not 100% on that. Chair, we just go ahead. Chair, I'm going to put the caller into the waiting room and if the caller would like to call back at another public invited to be heard opportunity, they can. Okay, thanks. Um, Ms. Norton, did you have a, a comment or question? Yeah, um, yeah, I did, and it, it was for Ms. Kruger. Um, I think that I personally would like to have an update on the direction that this is going um, and to understand what they were applying for, what exactly it is that the city is reviewing, and how the Eastside neighborhood's concerns and comments are being um, met and considered in that um, application review. Yes, I'm happy to do an information item on this project um, as well as um, just the review in general. Um, I can work on that and get it over shortly. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea to do that. And I know we've got a lot of new commissioners and there was a time where we took a look at what our demolition code standards were in the city. I think it would be a good idea to revisit that and just make everyone here aware and a good refresher for me and anyone else who's been on this for a little bit about what exactly our processes and where we have teeth and where we don't. So if we can put that on a future agenda uh, item for a future meeting, I'd very much appreciate that. Uh, any other questions uh, or comments about this particular item? Nope, seeing none. Again, thank you for the uh, call in. Uh, so we will move on to uh, new business. And our first order of business is a certificate of appropriateness application for 207 Bowen. Um, so Ms. Kruger, would you like to give us a staff report on that, please? Uh, certainly. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this um, property as uh, it just went through a COA application June of 2019, but 207 Bowen Avenue is the Beckwith Barn. Um, the house on this property was designated in 1985. Uh, the barn and outbuildings were designated after that in 2017. So the barn is currently vacant um, and seeking um, to repurpose the vacant barn into an ADU. Um, so again, the owner received a COA in June of 2019 for the project, um, but then decided uh, needed to make some alterations to the design and so therefore is back uh, for a new COA. Um, so in the packet, I have included um, elevations that I labeled first approve a proposal existing as well as new proposal to help um, kind of showcase the changes that they're making. But essentially the things that are changing are the size of the windows on the west elevation, an additional window unit to the north, an additional window on the east, the front door on the south side, and the dormers on the south elevation seem to have changed a little bit um, in style from gables to a shed appearance. Um, so again, those are in the packet if you're looking for more visualization. 
On this project, we received several public comments. Um, I sent an email earlier today, I think around 2 p.m., after I had compiled the most recent ones I received from Monday of this week through Wednesday. Um, but I did also know a separate comment that I received much earlier under the public hearing notice and posting section of your packet. Um, there's a general concern about where parking will be designated for this barn. Um, I've let every um, public uh, member of the public who's commented about parking on this uh, application know that this is just um, a COA for approval from, you know, going from a vacant barn into an ADU. And so once, if and when this is approved by the Historic Preservation Commission, this will still need to go through planning review uh, where parking can certainly be addressed there. Um, but I just wanted to note that um, most who have commented about parking um, would like to, for the applicant to consider creating parking on the north side of the structure. Um, so, and, uh, and again, uh, the additional comments are related to um, Believing that the barn is uh, the new design is potentially radically changing the appearance of the barn and therefore um, perhaps not as um, historic as they would they would like to um, keep the structure. So um, again, I've sent those by email, and if anyone didn't receive those, please let me know. Um, staff would recommend the commission move to approve the COA for this application. Um, with the condition that the applicant uh, just approve all. Um, manufacture and materials and makes of windows and doors before work commences. Okay, so do we have any uh, questions for staff? Uh, Commissioner Bagwell? I'd just like to point out that if you're um, looking at the, uh, can you hear me? The new proposal versus the first proposal. Uh, Approved proposal existing. The north and south elevations are flipped. So you have to, you, it's not, you're not looking at, <laughs> that makes sense. If you see on the first approved proposal on the left hand side, it says existing south elevation, and then below it, the existing north elevation. On the new proposal, the existing north elevation is at the top on the left-hand side, and the south elevation is on the bottom. So you have to kind of, when you're looking at those, you just kind of have to flip them to make sure you, you're looking at apples to apples. Thank you. Uh, any other commissioner questions for staff? Okay, uh, I don't see any. So uh, at this point, we will give the applicant an opportunity to make a presentation, if they so wish. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Hello, this is John. Can you, can you turn on your video? Oh. There you are. Great. You may begin. Yeah, we just decided that the windows that originally were approved were going to be too small. Uh, they won't let in enough light uh, into, the, into the structure. And uh, we just wanted to try to get some more light into, this, into the barn. And the style of the door that we originally chose was, uh, we didn't feel like it was in keeping with the, with the barn, so we wanted to, Instead of having the side lights, we were going to do something a little different, as you can see on the drawing. And we did um, switch architects. Uh, the, the initial drawings were, um, well, kind of subpar. And Guy Stevenson, um, he, uh, he drew up some new plans and had some really good ideas that some of the head heights weren't working on the stairwells. And, and whatnot. So um, he kind of retooled that. All right. Thanks. Uh, do we have any uh, commissioner questions for the applicant now that we have them? 
Commissioner Guy? Yeah, so I was just wondering on the west side of the building, and I will show uh, openings, I believe that opens into the alley. Are those just kind of false doors? Yes, they're just a, they're just a, a faux door, just a. Okay. All right. Well, I want to commend you. This is definitely a much improved version from the very first one that we saw. I think it's much more in keeping with the style of the building and hopefully yeah. we'll put in the, the original, I'm sorry, the original, um, he, was a, he was an engineer, he wasn't an architect that did the original drawing. So yeah, that, that we, <laughs> yes, I think we, we moved it up a, a couple matches. Uh, any other commissioner questions for the applicant? I don't see any, I have one. Uh, <clears throat> Staff did make a mention about the windows. Can you speak to the type of windows that you intend to install as uh, the new windows? Uh, we were looking at uh, a true divided light wood window that uh, is similar to the window that's in the eave of on the west side of the, the barn. It's currently in the barn. So it's be a, a true divided light window windows. I think we're going to, I don't know, we could ask um, Guy what, or, or John what, what windows they'd suggest. Yeah, this is Guy Stevenson here. I did the, the most recent submittal. Uh, we haven't picked a window manufacturer yet, but um, there's a number of them that do a um, um, highly insulated, true divided light um, wood interior and exterior. That's, that's the plan. We just don't have, we have not picked a manufacturer yet, though. Okay, great. That's fine. And that's all I was really looking for. You know, on the drawings, it's hard to tell whether, you know, these Munton patterns are, you know, intended to be just uh, between the glass or a true divided light, like you mentioned, and there's a giant difference. So Def definitely not between the glass. No, thank you. So the true divided. Yeah, so that's basically, I think what um, my expectation would be in terms of um, the staff taking a look at that. If, if, if it's on that level, then, then I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Great. Um, would it be okay to do a, a clad exterior? Or, or would you want to see a, a, a painted wood uh, exterior? Um, I don't know. Do, any uh, comments from the commissioners before I throw my... I don't know what a clad... I don't know what that is. Well, a, a wood window, if it was a true wood window, it would be painted wood on the outside of the window. If it's a clad window, it's actually aluminum that's been painted at the factory. Um, aesthetically, I think they look, they look exactly the same. The only difference is that the paint on the um, cladding lasts forever. Um, the paint on the wood needs to be repainted every couple, three, four years. Thanks, and I did just find some pictures of that as well, so thank you. Uh, Commissioner Norton? <clears throat> sure, I actually don't agree that they look exactly the same. Um, I put a, a new window into my own home this summer and uh, chose a wood exterior because I wasn't um, thrilled with how the clad windows looked in a historic house. So. I would recommend if it's an option to go with the full wood interior exterior. Okay. Yeah. Any other <clears throat> commissioner comments or questions? Yep, Commissioner Guy. Um, I would agree with Commissioner Norton. Um, while kind of, you know, in the shop photos, they, they do look the same, but after a you know, small amount of weather wearing, they, they typically do not look quite the same. Um, but also, I would look to, you know, what is historically in the building. So, you know, our expectation is that you would replace things in kind. So, if the original windows were wood windows, then that's, that's what the expectation would be that you okay. would be replacing. Okay, 
Well, uh, unless there are any other comments or questions, I will go ahead and open up the public hearing component of this uh, <clears throat> agenda item. So if there's uh, any folks out there that would like to uh, comment, we'll put the instructions up on the screen. We'll have a five minute break uh, and then we'll uh, queue everyone up. Um, again, if the commissioners, if you can turn your mics and cameras off while we wait for everybody to uh, get on board. Uh, We'll see you back here in five minutes. Commissioner Carpenter, uh, before you mute yourself, can we test your mic again? You're coming in a little difficult to hear. Uh, yeah, I have it on right now. Can you hear me? Um, I'm, I thought it was the wrong person. Sorry, Commissioner Carpenter. It was Gayu. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me, uh, let me mute myself then. Commissioner Gayu, can we test your, your mic again? Okay, Chair, I'm going to stop sharing. We'll give 
our live stream about 30 seconds more to catch up to where we're at. If everyone could come back on, that would be appreciated. And Commissioner Gayu, can we check your mic? You were coming in a little quiet and hard to hear. Sure. Is this all right? Um, yes. It, is there any way that you can move your your camera or mic a little closer or sit closer? Try again. Yeah. Ah, much better. Thank you. Chair, we have no one for this public hearing item. Okay, great. Okay, well, uh, then I'll uh, close the public hearing portion, uh, portion of this uh, item and I guess uh, open it up to commissioners for any further discussion. Uh, seeing no one, um, uh, I will say from having been involved in the, even back to the very earliest applications for this property that uh, in a series of moves over the last couple of uh, years, we, uh, we've arrived at a, at a much uh, more palatable um, looking product than uh, where we very much, where we started out. So I certainly appreciate the efforts uh, taken. Um, with that said, uh, I'll uh, entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the 207 bone certificate of appropriateness as, um, as shown. Second. Second. Okay. So I have a uh, motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner Gayu and Commissioner Goon, I believe. Um, all in favor of approving the certificate of appropriateness application for 207 Bowen. Now, just to be clear, are we um, approving this as proposed by staff? In other words, with the condition that um, that they that staff gets to review and approve the window uh, specification. Is that your intent, uh, Commissioner Guy? I'll amend my um, motion as, as noted. Okay, perfect. And the second is still uh, okay with that? Okay, perfect. So uh, moved and amended <coughs> and seconded, sorry. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, aye and aye. 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 Okay, looks like we uh, passed unanimously. Um, and so uh, there we have it. Congratulations, thank you. Okay, um, so then we will move on to item 6B, which is a certificate of appropriateness application and a preliminary tax credit application for 710 Martin Street. Uh, with respect to this property, uh, I actually had some professional involvement, and so I am going to need to uh, recuse myself from this portion of the hearing and turn this particular set of proceedings over to our vice chair, uh, Commissioner Gayo. So uh, uh, during this time, I will un, I will mute and uh, turn my video off, and then I'll jump back in once uh, this uh, when six B is completed. Thank you, Commissioner Gayu, All yours. Okay, so I'm on the only factor sure what I'm supposed to say here, but will I believe we open the public hearing for this item? Or does staff make a presentation? Sorry. Maria, can you jump in? Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, uh, we could go ahead and start with the, uh, the uh, staff presentation. Great, I will jump right in then. So 710 Martin Street, I'm sure most of you are quite familiar with this property as it was designated just this past year in 2019. Um, this is the Cordova Anaya house that was owned um, by Jeff Cordova and his parents, Joe and Ramona Anaya. Um, before this home was designated in 
November of 2019, it was vandalized. Therefore, some of this work, um, such as removing the, the rear porch or mudroom, needed to happen before um, the COA just so that they could secure the home itself. Um, so this application is for um, a COA for quite a bit of work. Um, if you turn to page two of your packet, I've um, listed all the alterations um, in detail and the applicant has provided some very good photos um, before and after of the property. Um, so we've got the COA and then we also have the tax credit application. Um, I was able to, uh, on page four, break down all of the, the work um, and the qualified costs that were provided by the applicant to come up with a total of $97,880 and some change for the total eligible for the tax credit, um, making that credit, um, if approved, $19,576.15. And, and um, I received no public comments related to this project. Um, and after staff review, we would um, recommend the commission move forward of the approval of the COA and the tax credit application um, with one condition, just that the applicant confirm paint colors um, with staff before repainting the exterior. And I'm happy to answer any questions and I believe the applicant um, Ms. Louch is also on the, the call today. I, I, I couldn't tell if the, uh, the siding that's proposed is going to match the dimensional characteristics of the existing you know, fiber cement siding usually has a wider spacing to it. Uh, I believe that uh, currently it has vinyl siding on it. So the original siding is no longer in place. So I think it's probably reasonable that there was uh, the preference obviously would be that they would replace it with wood going back to the storage material, but that's not a requirement. None, none of the original siding is remaining, is what you're saying. That is true. I guess my, my question from looking at the layout of uh, um, the original and the proposed layout um, would be whether the kitchen and the front bedroom could be switched so that the bathroom could be at the back of the property rather than quite visible from the front facade of the building. I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to review it with the architect, but the way the the interior is laid out right now. We only have to take one wall down to make that interior, the kitchen and dining room and living room all work together. Whereas if we start moving the kitchen, then we'd have to move more walls. So that was the reason that we chose to do it the way we did. I mean, it would seem that it would just be instead of removing the wall between bedroom three and the kitchen that's currently there, you would just be removing some of the wall of bedroom one to probably create an opening between that kitchen and the living room. Um, they seem to be spaces of very similar size. There's also the problem that this is part of a larger development project and there is a series of townhouses behind the building, so there's not a whole lot of space behind, whereas in that side yard where the bathroom currently is, there's more space. Okay. Um, are you maybe anticipating doing some landscaping that would kind of... Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Are there any other questions from commissioners? Um, and then as far as that bathroom goes, are you switching uh, the direction of the siding or anything on that 
what is the siding going to look like on that? It's going to remain the same as it is, so it'll blend in with the rest of the house. There are no additional questions. Um, I believe we can go to the public hearing section of this. Yes, Vice Chair, I'm ready when you are. Uh, hearing none, let's move to the public hearing section. So you should see on your screen the information for you to give us a call if you'd like to speak on this particular public hearing item. We will leave this up for about five minutes and then we will return.
All right, we're about ready to come back online. I'll give our viewers another 30 seconds or so. If you can begin to show your cameras, we'll continue on. And Vice Chair, that looks like it's been five minutes and we have no one in our waiting room. You may begin. Uh, there's no public speakers. Um, I want to make sure that there are no further comments or concerns from the committee. If not, uh, somebody would like to make the motion. I'd move that we we approve the certificate of appropriateness for 712 Martin Street. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Can everybody vote raising their hand and saying aye? And I think I said 712 and I meant 710. Sorry about that. Okay, motion as amended. <laughs> Do we need to bring uh, Chairperson Wayne back into the meeting, or is he watching it? Yep. Um. <laughs> uh, one one moment, if I might interject. Um, we approved the COA. Uh, are you approving the tax credit separately, or or was that motion for both the COA and the tax credit? It was meant for both. Agreed. Okay, can that just be amended into the record? The motion is amended to include the preliminary tax credit application. Does that include the uh, recommendation that the staff approve the paint colors? So, uh, Commissioner Green, was your recommendation, your motion to include the, the, the staff recommendations for further approval from them? You know, actually, I, I don't know about that because it's not, it's, it's preserved because of the, because of what happened there, not so much the historical significance of the house. So I'm not sure it's as important, is it? Whether that's but, our house? The paint colors are listed in the packet too. I mean, I know we haven't visually seen them, but it sounds like they're gonna paint them the same as they already are, so. Right. Okay, so you're not amending your, your motion? No. Okay. I'll maintain my second. I agree with Terry. <laughs> All right, so we already voted on on the unamended, so I think we're we're fine there. Unless you'd like another vote, uh, Jade or Maria. Fine. That works for me. Thank you so much. Yes, that works. Thank you. So I believe that concludes seven ten Martin. Okay. okay. Thank you, Commissioner Gayu, for uh, leading us through that one. Um, okay, we'll move on to uh, item 6C, which is a certificate of appropriateness application for 719 Third Avenue. Uh, Ms. Kruger, would you uh, give us a staff report, please? Uh, certainly, Chair. Um, so this is the Dr. John Andrews House. Um, the applicant has applied for had applied for, excuse me, and received a COA in 2012, um, essentially for the same work. Um, however, after they completed some of the work, they, they had replaced some of the windows, they did not complete the porch enclosure. Um, because it has been two years since the COA was approved, we wanted to bring it back to the commission for um, official re review. 
Um, so the, the application in front of you in your packet is um, solely for the certificate of appropriateness. However, the applicant does intend to apply for tax credits um, in the future once there's a, a better estimation of cost for this project. Um, so um, I received no public comments on this project and after review, um, staff would recommend that the commission move approval of the COA for the installation of new double hung Pella 250 vinyl windows to fill the currently open area between the sill and the head of the porch walls, um, which would enclose the, the porch area. Um, this area has been, um, uh, the water has been leaking and causing damage, so the applicant would like to fix this issue as soon as possible. Um, staff would also recommend the following condition, um, just that um, we review and approve the building permit plans just to ensure that they demonstrate the new windows match the current style um, existing on the rest of the home and um, the condition that the, this COA is also valid for two years um, if and when COA, the COA is approved by the commission. And Any I believe questions? the applicant and the architect are on this uh, call with us today. Great. Uh, questions, uh, Commissioner Gay? Yeah, I guess I was a little bit confused by this because it, it appeared that the original request was um, to remove enclosing the porch, to reopen it. And um, I see on like page four, 10 of uh, the packet that you sent, there's a photograph that shows the porch being enclosed with the proposal that it be open. So now they're asking to re-enclose the porch? If I could speak to this, um, my name is Tom Moore. I'm the architect uh, working with the styles. Um, I'm not sure I heard this correctly, but I believe that the styles did not make a previous application for a COA on this project. The previous owners did that. And the previous owners did a lot of modifications to this residence, um, including replacing all of the existing windows with a Pella product that we are now matching. Again, my understanding is that this particular, the prior application was supposed to do more to the sleeping porch and it was not done. The application that we submitted shows the existing porch view. It's it's simply an open porch with an odd, oddly placed column uh, that has some structural Im implications, but we are proposing to uh, re-enclose this porch because it's not currently uh, designed for any kind of weather mitigation. Um, the styles have endured a lot of water damage and some mold um, issues because of the water that's able to get into their wall, the existing wall of this porch. Um, and they, they, they really do need to make this work, get this work done before we get any, have, have any much more rain. So um, the porch now is open. Uh, we do not know what happened to the original COA application by the prior owners that it did not get completed as approved. But now we want to come back in and put windows in that match the existing windows now that are on the residence uh, so that there's a consistency of uh, window element. Yes, that's that's correct. I apologize if I misspoke. The, the original COA from 2012 was, was not done by the, the current owners, the styles. Uh, Ms. Kruger, so just to clarify for all of us, so the original COA by the previous owner did involve removal of existing windows to open the porch and was approved and may or may not have been installed per the approved COA? That's correct. If I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing what your proposal is. I see a picture of the open porch uh, a photograph of the open porch, and then I see existing east porch elevation, but I don't see any plans for what you're proposing, what it's going to look like. Do you have our exhibit, um, sheet A1? 
that we submitted with our application for the COA? I, I don't believe that I have that. So I have Exhibit 7-1. I was going to ask the same question. So I don't know, Ms. Kruger, yeah. do you have? Uh, I think we're missing some information. Right. Um, exhibit exhibit 7-1, correct, Tom? Um, I submitted a sheet A-1 that gave the existing porch view and a photograph and then a, then a, a rendered porch view of the same view with our proposed enclosure. I don't know what you put in their packets. Yeah, we're missing that second sheet. You know, it's there's a chance, Tom, that what you submitted was for the tax credit application, and so I did not include that. I do have the Exhibit 7-1, which is the existing porch view. Um, I'm, a, I'm guessing then that that second elevation was not included in this packet for the COA. My apologies. Uh, is there any way to post that? I don't know. Do we have the opportunity for Mr. Moore to share a screen if he has it? I mean, can we get this up for everyone to see during this meeting? Or if you have it from the tax credit stage, can you forward the link to everybody? Yes. Um, give me just a, just a moment here to look for it, and I can um, I can either email it to you all or try to screen share if that is appropriate. Yeah, because I don't I don't really feel like I can move forward with this unless I know what it's going to look. Like. I agree, but if there's a way to get that done during this meeting rather than postponing the month, I think I would really like to do that. Um, while we wait for that to be posted, I do have a question. So you say that you want to um, have new windows that fit with the other palace style windows that were put in. They put vinyl windows into this building? Yes, they are clad, a vinyl clad window is now what is throughout the house, throughout the residence. Thank you. I could share a screen view if we had the ability to do that. I'm trying to find the exactly. Uh, give us just a moment. We'll see if Jade can pull it up, sir. Okay. Hey, Jade, have you been able to find that? I, I'm not sure I have the right one, Tom. Can you please refer it to me? Let me see if I can uh, share my screen. I think I might, is it sheet A1, Tom? Yes, it is. All right, let me give that a shot. If you open it up first, yep, there you go. Can you see that now? Yes, yes we can. that's it. Let me know if I need to zoom in at all. I just have one quick question. What's the material on the, um, well, I guess that's a porch section. So are we seeing kind of a beadboard material beyond? Is, uh, is that what yes, we're that, looking? that's a beadboard that's on the interior of the porch that exists. It, it, those are all existing materials, Chairman Lane. Okay, thank you. So really the only work is truly the windows in that infill opening and then you're going to rework the header so that the windows have some sort of logical pattern to them. Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Well, that's substantially helpful. <laughs> and Commissioner Norton, regarding your question, I was looking back through the 2012 COA, and uh, it looked like at that time the commission approved um, some window replacement. I'm not sure if they approved all window replacement. I know they wanted to keep some of the stained glass windows that were in the home, and I think that did occur. Um, I know that they approved for some of the replacement windows. It was a Pella aluminum clad window, Proline series, double hung. So I don't know if uh, in between when that approval occurred and 
when the uh, prior owner uh, changed out that what was approved from what was actually installed. If that was the case, that's certainly unfortunate. Thank you for that clarification, though. That's helpful. Sure. Perhaps that's why they didn't come back to complete the COA, because they changed their minds on the material. And yes, that's a very unfortunate choice on, on their part. Okay, well, we kind of jumped right into the um, applicant presentation there, um, but uh, do we, <laughs> are there any other uh, questions of the applicant uh, or applicant's representative from commissioners before we open public hearing? Okay, I don't see anyone. Okay, uh, so we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing portion of this um, item number. So for the Hopefully, I think the last time here uh, tonight, we'll all take a five minute break and wait uh, for uh, anyone who might be interested in commenting on this proposal to uh, get online. Five minutes.
All right, commissioners, we're coming back on here. We'll give our live stream audience a few more seconds as I watch the screen disappear. All right, it just cleared and I see no one has entered or called in. Thank you. Uh, well, with uh, no one on the line, then we'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing. Uh, so at this point, um, I guess if there are any further discussion uh, from the commissioners, and if not, we go ahead and entertain a motion. I would uh, note that we do have staff recommendations for that motion for conditions. So. Uh, while you're doing it, if you are interested in making the motion, please uh, refer to those as you. And uh, commissioners, just let me know if you want me to share my screen again on that particular uh, sheet, plan sheet. Okay, thanks. So any, uh, any commissioners that would like to chime in with a discussion point? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, certificate of appropriateness with uh, the staff recommendations. I have a motion. Second. Uh, I have a second by Commissioner Bagwell. So I have a motion and a second on the floor to approve the uh, uh, certificate of appropriateness application for 719 3rd Avenue. I'll take your votes. All in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 Okay, and nay, none, so motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you for your time. Take care. Okay, all right, thank you all. Uh, we will move on to um, item seven, which is information and discussion items. Uh, Ms. Kruger, do we have any of those? Oops, sorry, my video there was going in and out. I don't have any for you uh, this meeting, Chair. All right, very good. Uh, then uh, item number eight is uh, see, comments from our HBC commissioners. Uh, do any commissioners like to make a comment or a statement? Uh, Commissioner Norton? Well, thanks. Um, so I think next month when we are discussing tax credits, I would also like to see on the agenda us talk about um, kind of the direction of the commission. I know that uh, last fall with a different staff member, you know, we were talking about different um, initiatives or directions that we kind of wanted to take preservation um, here in Longmont. And I'd kind of like to see us return to those conversations. We also had conversations around having historic preservation as part of the new zoning code, and that seems to have dropped off. Um, and I'd also like to talk about our responsibilities as a CLG. Um, I'm not sure that we're meeting those through our training. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to have staff address um, all of these different issues and maybe have all of us have a conversation uh, about what we're doing on the commission and what we'd like to see done with preservation in the city. Thank you, Commissioner Norton. I might uh, just amend or add some comments to that, that if in case, uh, especially if we have a heavy agenda, that that's, that's an awful lot to cover. So um, I think it would be totally appropriate to sort of parse those out into a number of different meetings, but uh, I would agree it would be a good idea to kind of circle the wagons and make sure that we're kind of revisiting our various roles and how we integrate with the city over the course of the next few meetings. That, yeah, and I can agree with parsing that out as well. Okay, thanks.
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, clicking too fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, comments from Commissioner Bagwell first. I saw her for hand first, and then uh, Commissioner Gay will get, get to you. Uh, we need you to unmute. Hi. I'd like to add to Commissioner Norton's agenda. We have specialized funds dedicated to historical preservation from people that have uh, applied and gotten credit through our commission. And we've never had a clear understanding if it's 15, 17, 20, how much money we actually do have that we could use to further the projects that we'd like to see accomplished. So I'd like to have a, a understanding of where that money is and how much money we do have at our hands. Okay, thanks for those comments, Commissioner Beckwell. Uh, Commissioner Guy. Um, also along those lines, I, I feel like those are some large topics that we need uh, fairly in-depth conversations with. And we have not had a board retreat or anything like that for a number of years now. I think a lot of the people on this commission currently um, have never attended one. Um, so we might consider that. I know it's not a great time, you know, it's not optimal to do it uh, remotely, but, you know, considering the, the kind of the weightiness of the topic, we might consider having a separate uh, board meeting to discuss those sorts of things rather than trying to plan them into um, one of our monthly meetings. Yep. Uh, thanks for those comments, Commissioner. Uh, and yeah, I think, I mean, with those, with the weird time that we have right now, maybe it's worth a high level hit uh, in the next handful of meetings to make sure that we at least touch on some of this uh, in a couple of meetings and then see where our, uh, our world goes in the next few months and maybe beginning of the year or something. If it, if it looks like things have finally settled down, we could potentially get get together and have a little more, I think it would be a lot more productive even in a room with people standing around far away from each other than, uh, than this environment. But at any rate, uh, well, good points. Uh, any other comments from the board? No, okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take any comments we have from uh, Mr. Rodriguez, our council representative. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just as always, thank you for your service, Commissioners, and uh, thank you to the staff. And I hope everyone uh, is doing all right and have a good rest of your week and a good weekend. See you next month. Great, thank you. Uh, and unless there's anything further, then I will take a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay, a couple of seconds, or motion and some seconds. All those in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> all right, carries unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you all for your time and uh, see you next month. Thank you. Thanks again for staff. Thanks, staying. everybody. Thank care. you, staff. Thank you. Bye, everybody.